On Tuesday, Google announced Stadia, their streaming game platform. Should Nintendo jump in? Here to talk about it is Johnny Casino. Hi, I'm Johnny Casino. What? You're watching Forget Being Cool. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi. Hi, John. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, John. Uh, hey. Hey. Dave, up? let me tell you something. <laughs> okay, you're going to tell me something? Let me Good. tell you something, Dave. <sighs> Nintendo has their version of innovation, their version of trying something new, mm-hmm. and they do those things right when it comes to let's make a system that you can just take off the TV and walk around with and take anywhere and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's where they're shining. But these fools do not have the online infrastructure and the servers and all that stuff to get anywhere near what Google is doing, what Microsoft looks like they're doing. For the love of God, they do not need to be doing this. I agree with you that they are not prepared. The question, John, more or less, comes down to are they going to be forced into this model, right? Because if, let's pretend for just a moment that Stadia, Google Stadia streaming service, works exactly the way they present it, meaning any screen you have anywhere, anytime works. Yes. To play games. Does, sure. Yeah, that's what they do. Do we no longer care about the novelty of the Nintendo Switch because now it's... I can only play Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild on my one screen. I can put it on my TV. But now I have to take this device with me to play it anywhere on the go. Like, if Project X Cloud and Stadia come to fruition and what it seems like is going to happen, and I assume not this console generation, but the next one, are Nintendo's... Are, is Nintendo being forced into this so... position? The only way that the Stadia and the Microsoft's xCloud or whatever it's called is going to have a chance to knock Nintendo down with what the Switch can do, being able to take it with you, be able to play it on the go, all that stuff. The only way they're going to be able to infringe on them in that way is if phone internet speeds... And connections are constant enough and fast enough to do these services that Google and Microsoft are trying to offer. I mean, 5G is is on its way. Okay, but we don't know how well that's going to work, what areas that's going to be on. I mean, let's talk about people that take the subway into work, right? You're not going to – I don't think you're going to be able to get good 5G service underground in a subway. No no matter what they do. Yeah. I mean, they could – you know, run internet or cell phone towers in the subway stations? I, I don't know. Well, but we, the odds we, of that happening we, are low. We're talking about how uh, VR could be dangerous, John, just a minute ago for children. And I'm not yeah. one of these kind of people who uh, gets paranoid about, you know, my AirPods in my ears or anything. But I don't think we should be putting cell towers underground where there's mass electricity uh metal cars and lots and lots of people that doesn't seem smart in my book (laughs) so i I have no idea like i i don't know if if there's any danger there or not like i don't either i just doesn't sound it doesn't sound safe it i i think more importantly it doesn't sound practical okay right so the reality is nintendo is still going to have that market now how many people use that i don't know right but also nintendo has the kid in the car market, right? Hey, we're going to go on a long drive. Hey, we're going somewhere. Kid, shut the hell up. Take your switch and leave me alone, right? <laughs> uh, don't get me... Hey, you know those parents are out there. I'm not going to say I'm one of them. I don't care if Ryan brings a switch in the car, but, you know, but those kids are not going to have an internet connection, right? Like, I'm not going to hand my phone back to someone and be like, here... No, I want my phone on me in case I need it or to stream music or because I mean, I always have my my phone is basically what plays audio for me in the car just through my you know phone speak or the my car speakers. So they're not going to have 
that. Now, if all cars start coming out with automatic, you know, Wi-Fi built into them, all my, these 5G networks, which my, in time is going to happen. The, the car I, I had had the built-in LTE. You could, yeah. pay, you could pay 20 bucks a month for unlimited LTE in the car at all times, which is... I mean, that's not bad. Yeah, no, it's not. And I didn't pay for it because I didn't need it because I had unlimited data on my phones. But yeah, I couldn't think of any other devices I'd want to connect. But in the future of everything being connected to everything at all times, streaming services, like, I don't know, I'd consider that more for a road trip than anything. Oh, yeah, no. Well, but then also you're going to hit areas on a long road trip where your connection is garbage. I mean, I just drove across you know, seven states or whatever it was. And there were times we had great connection and there was times I had zero connection. Right. So I think, I, I don't think anytime soon, any of these services are going to infringe on what Nintendo has done with the switch. Now in the future, moving forward, when, you know, as internet is progressing and as more people are getting the higher speed and as more places are getting the gigabyte, whatever stuff they're probably going to have to to some extent like they're like and ev- everything's talking about moving into an all digital world which i don't like because i like having my cartridges in my switch boxes but i mean eventually yes anytime soon no so you don't even think by the time the next nintendo console rolls out like the switch has got a huge momentum right now still like to this day, yeah. Nintendo continues to sell more and more Switches than everybody thought would ever happen. I'm just curious if Nintendo's like opinion on like innovation, designing their own controllers, designing their own platforms. Like Mario Odyssey is a game that, it, like, at its core, is a traditional 3D platformer, right? But they took the the joy cons and the pro controller and said if you well if you tilt your controller a little bit you can like throw the hat right and you throw into a a mix of saying well google makes controllers sony makes controllers microsoft makes controllers like do you need nintendo controllers to play nintendo service like that's kind of weird like we're in this weird market where i think if streaming becomes a thing like nintendo's tendency to innovate and create experiences that are completely unique may get lost because they're going to be forced to become Nintendo's online gaming streaming service. Uh, they'll probably call it Nintendo doo-doo because they can't name anything. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I think that name you just came up with is about the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Mm, okay. Um, but I think... And I don't... Okay, so I... Nintendo WIFO. My, it's going to be Nintendo go. WIFO. That makes more sense. <laughs> No, the 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 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. There you go, the Nintendo Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. It'll uh, it'll be spelled Wi-Fi, but it, everybody will have to say it Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um. So I think that they need to team up with other people, and I don't know that I would have had this thought if it weren't for all these rumors and all these things about Microsoft stuff being on the Switch and and whatever else of that. They need to get together with these other services, get together with Google, get together with whatever, and make deals where it's like, hey, you have their hardware, their games we played on their hardware, maybe make deals where maybe some of their games can end up on Stadia, and Stadia can do a thing where you can just do the full stream straight to the Switch if you have the right power, whatever. Like, I think that is going to be more their thing. Now, this- don't get me wrong. I never, I never want Nintendo to go away as a hardware thing. I want to have a Nintendo system at all times in my possession. I would agree. Right? But there is something to be said about the fact that what makes Nintendo really, really special is their franchises and the quality of their games. And so maybe allow those to kind of go out somewhat into a service that can have the this, infrastructure to do these other things. This conversation seems so familiar back to like the early days when I started doing podcasting where Nintendo was hurting with the Wii U and like everybody was saying Nintendo needs to go third party, Nintendo needs to be on everything. And then I was like, no, like no they don't. The Wii U is spectacular if you just give it a chance. 
And the Switch is spectacular because Nintendo is willing to innovate and create their own unique experiences. This uh, this makes me nervous that I, I feel like with Microsoft kind of doing what everybody said Nintendo needed to do, and I feel like Sony being forced by gamers to do cross-play and just... These studios and Steam and the Epic Game Store and all this stuff that has become... You get games from us and that's what makes them special. Makes me worried if Nintendo and these companies do not move to this eventual future where things are available everywhere. You're just paying them for them and you can play with... You know, Nintendo can still make Pokeball Pluses to play Pokemon Let's Go. Even if it was yeah. on Stadia, you can still go buy Pokeball Pluses. Who cares? It would still be the same kind of experience. Does Nintendo just kind of get lost in the shovel because their hardware is not incredibly, you know, impressive? Or does hardware not even matter at this point? Like, if, if Stadia becomes what they think it is, it's, it's, it's literally an HDMI dongle put into your TV to play on your TV. It's not even a. There's, Which, not even by a the way. there's not even a remote for that thing, John. Do you know that you have to like interface that thing using like a phone to make that thing boot up? Like you can't even like watch Netflix. Like you can't even like pick up the thing, go oh, to Netflix. Oh, the, uh, the, the Chromecast. Google... Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I mean, this is maybe my old man being just concerned about interface and not knowing how to interact with things, and I'm becoming old, and then. Our children, John, will be the only ones who know how to, like, turn the TV on and get to uh, the new Mario game. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, it, it, I'm definitely torn. Um, I, I definitely think that that if, if this cloud-based gaming thing can work uh, on, a, on a large scale, right? So we, I, I've tested it out, you know with the beta they had and everything like that. And I know it can work in certain places, but if it gets to work and work on a large scale everywhere to where almost everyone or everyone can do it. I mean, maybe that's a thing. Maybe Nintendo puts out their next thing and it is a, um, controller, a, a controller and an online service and a dongle for your TV. Or maybe it's similar to the switch where it's low end, but it has a 4K screen, right? But low end computing, and it just runs everything off of off of streaming, and it has like a 5G thing in it or something like that. I mean, it's, who knows? It's almost weird to me how we're jumping from like physical media, like kind of dying to what people are assuming now. I feel like we're gonna jump to a streaming digital future, not even like a digital only future. Like there's we're skipping that middle ground where we all just start buying our games digitally and then start streaming them. Like with movies, when we get the movie industry, like we were buying VHS tapes. Then we started buying DVDs. Then we started buying digital movies and Blu-rays. Right. And like then and less and less people have started slowly buying Blu-rays. And then Netflix came in and said, we're going to do streaming. You can watch all your TV via streaming. We're not going to mail you DVDs anymore. Although you can still pay for that, and some people still do in 2019. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, that, yeah, I don't know. That shift it, seems it, quick, it, it, but it, okay, it seems quick. But I think it is, is a long enough road ahead that that middle ground is still going to be there for at least a little bit. Um, but also, I kind of hope it's not. Like, I hope the next Xbox, the next PlayStation, are not digital only even though even though i don't care about having physical copies of of xbox and and playstation games except for the fact that that's where i get my deals right like that's where i find them on the cheap at this point i'd be way more excited for microsoft and sony to step in here and say we're going to put our services on nintendo switch and on your smart tvs and on your Roku's, and if you already have an existing PlayStation 4, you can now stream PlayStation 5 games, but it's a streaming-only service. And then they also put out the hardware to run it, right? Like, you can run 
physical or digital only games, which I think is more I mean, likely at this point. Th- there, there is something to be said, and, and I'm sure there's a million reasons why this isn't the greatest idea in the world or whatever, but there is something to be said is, hey, what if there's just one box? Like, Sony has their games, Microsoft has their game, third party has their games. I mean, wouldn't just the the cost savings for Microsoft and the cost saving for Sony to not have to put in the R&D into the actual machine itself, like, wouldn't that, like, save them a lot of money? And from my understanding is they usually lose money on the boxes and gain it back on the software, Usually, but, at, at first, they're selling them for so much money that they usually make a small return on hardware. And then as time goes on, they usually make a little bit more. That's the way I understood it. But I'm, at, I'm at, by the sure. end, it seems like they lose money when they do like bundles and big things. Like They say, here's a Spider-Man PS4. I, they lose money on that console in exchange for knowing you'll probably buy more games. So, I could be wrong, but I'm I'm pretty sure that a lot of them lose money, especially at first, yeah. because of all the R and D and everything that goes into these these boxes. So if there was a way for them to play nice together and like some company makes a box, right? And well, then everyone just kinda like puts their stuff in it. But I mean it's it's probably not gonna happen. You're gonna get your fanboys from one side or the other that's like, well screw this, I don't want that one or the other. Except 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 Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo can all still make their own boxes. They just run everything. The same way that we're getting multiple launchers on PC. If you're a PC gamer, you've got the Epic Game Store, right? What's to say that you don't boot up this box? And yes, it's still a, it's a PlayStation, right? And it plays PlayStation games the best. Um, the, the problem I see and the problem I run into is then what's the point of exclusives, which is why Nintendo is in this position of... Their IP, like Mario and Zelda, are so valuable, John, that, oh, yeah. that I think they're saved in this way to say, if if the only way you can play Mario, if the only way you can play Zelda is on Nintendo's terms, they're, they're not going to just die, but they need to, well, they need to play, play with everybody else, and that's, if, if I get to pick a box, right, there's three boxes there's one from sony one from nintendo one from playstation and they say and xbox i said sony twice um if there's one from nintendo that'll be the one you want because that'll be the one with their exclusives and then we're all playing god of war on our nintendo nintendo digibox so i mean we're obviously getting way off the initial topic here but with microsoft now releasing halo on Steam, right? Mm-hmm. It seems like they are actually making a move to minimize the need for their own box. Yeah. And so, like, this weird future that we're discussing here, which all stemmed from should Nintendo become a cloud service at some point, uh, it, it, it seems like Microsoft's the one that's like, hey, we're going to take a step in this direction and see what happens, you know? So, because, because what, know, what at its core, the, what's most important is putting out great games that people will buy. Yeah. And that's where, and that's where I think that's where they make most of their money. Now, the other flip thing for Microsoft here is most people that have steam probably play it on a PC. If you have a PC, it's going to have windows. If you have windows, Microsoft's getting a paycheck. Right. So it's not, it's not one of those things where Microsoft's completely losing out. They're just doing okay in another way. Yeah. Right. And and, and I don't know the money balance so, there. Or so whatever. Mario Odyssey two on the Steam Store. No. I don't. No I don't think it's going to happen. No. But I could see a future in which that might be the right way to go. I also think that the better way to go would be to hook up with someone like Google. And find a way to do basically what Stadia is doing, mix in some Nintendo games and be able to stream it straight to your TV or your Switch or whatever. Or even just be able to put Stadia on the Switch, which you're not going to be able to get the 4K or the 1080. Right. Well, but the, get the 1080 maybe, but... It might work better then. <laughs> yeah. Because well, it'll be at 1080, because it'll never go to 4K, which is fine. Yeah, but but like 
I mean, can you imagine like that right there? I mean, now all of a sudden you're able to play these games that are never going to come, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, right? If that's your thing. Well, they it's never going to come to the Switch, but it could be played on just the Switch if you had this. Now, granted, you could also just straight play it on your TV. So why do you even need the Switch there? But whatever. You need the Switch for Nintendo's exclusive games. This well, is what it yes, goes back to. Like, so does uh, does Nintendo? be saved by think because the way google presented stadia is that it will be on everything right like it'll be on every device you own meaning just because they're saying it's running in the chrome browser on pc tablets and phones at the moment right and tvs with chromecast doesn't mean it's not coming to nintendo switch playstation xbox you know and i think that is the future of stadia we're gonna look at stadia again here Therefore, Nintendo saying, nah, we're going to keep our own little weird box over in the corner, and we're going to keep making our own weird things. Are they saved because these other these other players are going to play nice with them? Because I don't think... Because you're, you're, you're right, the Nintendo does not have the infrastructure to do this themselves. They would have to partner with Google, because they have no idea how the internet works. No, sadly. They, they definitely don't. But here's the thing, is if they partnered with someone like Google... And they uh, took their games and put it out in Stadia, right? Mm-hmm. Their sales of their boxes is going to go away. Right. Right. Because there's people like you, there's people like me, right, that just want to have the Nintendo thing. I want it because it's Nintendo and I want to have it sitting there. But there's a lot of other people that are like, I bought my Switch so I could play Breath of the Wild. I bought my Switch so I could play Smash Brothers. If they didn't have to buy the Switch to play the games, then they're just not going to buy the box. You know? Yeah. So, it's it, it it depends on how dead set and how much Nintendo wants to focus on having these devices. If they don't, if they get to the point where they're like, okay, we can step back from the devices, then who knows? And then I think their games could thrive. Anyway, John, thanks for talking to me about Nintendo coming as a streaming service. What did I call it? Nintendo Wi-Fi, Nintendo Diddly, Nintendo Doo-Doo. <laughs> wow, that's that's the ending this show needed. Guys, if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button or hit the like button if you're new here. Because I know subscribing is a commitment and it's difficult. You have to get so many videos in your subscription box from us. Because we're putting up like three di- videos a day this week. It's stressful, but it's a thing. And guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dave Moore, that's Johnny Casino, and we'll see you guys in another discussion. For more great discussions, hit that subscribe button or visit forgetbeingcool.com.